Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about an architectural design pattern that helps you achieve the vision of adaptive applications. The design pattern utilizes an architectural framework for designing and delivering your applications. And what it does is it allows you to think about your applications as far as the individual supporting services that are required and group them together so they can be managed efficiently and scale as your applications deliver on business needs. This also helps with technical debt. Technical debt is the accumulation of design choices that were potentially correct at the time or might not have been and have negative impact to the overall system's operational efficiency. So if we were to draw out what that looks like, I'm gonna draw this graph here. Time is along the bottom. I'm gonna draw this line here and this is the business output. And along the bottom here, I'm going to put the technical debt. So everything below this line here, this is the technical debt. And then we have this margin here, and this is the actual value that the business is delivering. But if we were to back this up, let's say the technical debt actually ran like this, or even did that. Now this margin of business value is really low and you actually get to the point here that the technical debt exceeded what the business is able to output. It can also increase your security risk when system complexity becomes overwhelming to mitigate for. However, through grouping together supporting components into an adaptive applications framework, you're able to zoom in on technical debt and pinpoint areas that can be improved and eventually eliminate it through an improved design. To move forward with a more secure, more agile, and more adaptable system that's easier to manage across cloud, let's think about provisioning services in four primary architectural tiers. So we've got the global services tier, we have the site services tier, we have the app level services tier, and we have the management and operations tier. Now that we've defined the application architecture, we can layer on four key strategic architectural benefits that are delivered with adaptive applications. Unified security and connectivity, system telemetry and advanced insight, common tooling and automation, and scalable real-time app delivery. Let's dive deeper into these four key benefits, starting with scalable real-time application delivery. Three services that we would offer at this tier is global scale services, self-healing delivery, and adaptive scaling. So global scale services would include things like global server load balancing, DNS, API gateway, delivering real-time experiences near the user. Global security services stop malicious traffic before it becomes costly. Then self-healing delivery. This is going to use health checks uh, and real-time performance monitoring to enable underperforming sites, clusters, instances to be automatically removed from service and alternate serving locations to handle the increased load. And then adaptive scaling. This is where system components scale in and out in response to changing performance demand. From there, we have the benefit of unified security and connectivity. So global IT can actually define security and network policies, and then app developers can consume uh, ensuring consistent policy enforcement without requiring developers to become experts in security or networking. These policies can then be loaded into the management and operational services tier, and then they can be delivered into enforcement points on the global shared services tier, uh, the site services tier, or down to the app services tier. Then we have the benefits from system telemetry and advanced insights. So consistent services across the application estate. Uh, this enables robust and consistent telemetry feeding the data systems that can leverage existing and future technology to continuously improve the security and performance with less human intervention. And then there is the common tooling and automation tier. So here we have sources of truth, testing and integration pipelines, APIs, and automation tasks. So for sources of truth, uh, each component in the system has a single source of truth, but that source of truth doesn't need to be the same for all system components. The main point is, is to keep them out of the data plane. And also I'll draw an application deployment here. 
So you'll want to note that I have a straight line showing the deployment into production. Implemented correctly, developer code inherits the security and network policies defined and managed by the appropriate experts, and that leaves them free to focus on creating and deploying new capabilities that support the business. And let's take a look at the testing and integration pipelines and APIs. A key point here is that customers can use whatever tooling they want. They're simply task pushers consuming instructions from the sources of truth, pushing down tasks to the site and application services tiers. The automated system is API driven with components querying and consuming services through the APIs defined within the relevant sources of truth. And then there's the automation tasks. And this is where the appropriate tasks are automatically instantiated when and where needed throughout the deployment process. This approach allows for tooling to change. It allows for policies and services to change. Even deployment environments can change all without significantly impacting developer speed. It enables the organization to test and implement new tooling and technologies without significant disruption to the business. A key requirement for a truly adaptable system is services that can deploy anywhere that are platform independent. That reduces the amount of re-engineering required if there is a need to shift from AWS to Azure, for example. So having said all that, by leveraging these architectural best practices, you can simplify operations, consolidate services, and unify your application security and delivery policies. If you have a greenfield deployment, that's great, and being able to take advantage of a design pattern like this from the beginning should save you from a lot of technical debt later on down the road. But if you're applying this to a brownfield deployment and re-architecting, then you should be able to eliminate technical debt along the way. So thanks for checking out this Brightboard today. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below or contact one of us at F5. And otherwise, we'll see you on the next one.